topology. So I think a really interesting question is, you know, to what extent so a lot of these, all these different floor theories, a lot of them have very similar structural features, surgery exact triangles, et cetera. And an interesting question is to what extent are these uh, floor theories determined by these formal properties? Um, you know, is there a way to axiomatize floor theory? Okay. So the goal, as I said, is to try to calculate instanton homology, uh, compute framed instanton homology, uh, for more manifolds. And in particular, for surgeries on knots. Using mostly formal properties and, and topology, lots of curvy calculus. So I'll, um, the way we do that roughly is, is we define two concordance invariants. which we call new sharp and tau sharp. And we use these to compute. I sharp of rational surgeries on uh, a variety of knots. So I'd like to describe the construction of these two concordance invariants um, and, and try to hint at how we use them to actually compute things. So I'll talk about uh, this new sharp invariant first. Okay. So the idea is, uh, so you know, given a knot, uh, let's consider um, the surgery exact triangle. So for non-negative integers and so involving uh, the three sphere, so I sharp of S3 to I sharp of N surgery on the knot to I sharp of N plus one surgery on the knot. Okay, and then back. And uh, let me, we'll focus on this map, which I'll call F sub N. And this is, uh, this is a, these are all cobordism maps. This, this map is induced by um, cobordism X sub N, which is the trace of N surgery on K. So it's, it's the cobordism induced by attaching a, an N frame two handle to the four ball along K. And we'll be interested in, in when this map vanishes. And one thing you can see is that this map is identically zero uh, for n greater than or equal to um, twice the slice genus minus one of the knot. And the reason for that uh, uh, has to do with an, uh, a, a junction. So this is the adjunction inequality. So, you know, you, you have um, a surface in this knot trace given by taking the slice or the, the, the minimal, uh, the, the surface in the four ball, which realizes the, the slice genus of K and capping it off with the two handle, um, the core of the two handle glued on. And that has, that's a surface with genus G sub S, the slice genus, and has self-intersection N. So the adjunction inequality tells you that if N is bigger than this quantity, the map has to, to vanish. So that's one basic fact we know about these maps. And then, you know, you see, once you know that this map vanishes, then, um, well, that tells you how, a little bit how about, about how the dimensions of these three groups are related, right? If this map is zero, then the exact triangle splits. And so the dimension for the N plus first surgery is one more than the dimension uh, for the N surgery. So you can prove other things. So, so we know that these maps 
uh, R zero for n big enough. And in fact, you can show that if the map associated to K surgery is zero, then the map associated to K plus one surgery is zero as well. So the, map, the maps are zero for n big enough. And at some point they stop being zero and are injective and they're injective from that point on. Okay. So just by studying this map, we, we can define an integer associated to the knot, n, sub, n of k. And uh, we define this to be the smallest non-negative integer, such that f sub n is identically 0. OK. And then new, this invariant that I want to talk about is the difference. We look at n of k minus n of the mirror. And what is this? I mean, this, so how to think about this? This is just a definition, but what it really does is it, it's the, um, it's essentially the, the n um, where the dimension of n, of n surgery is minimized. So what we prove is that um, if you look at these dimensions, as n varies, you in most cases have a unique minimum. And that minimum is occurring uh, exactly at, at nu sharp of k. So that's what nu sharp of k measures. So let me show you a picture. So what, I, what we've done here is on the x-axis we have n and we plotted the dimension of n surgery. And on the left, this is for the unknot. On the right, uh, it's for the right-handed trefoil or in the middle. And on the right, it's for the, the figure eight. And new, this invariant new is, again, um, new sharp is, is where the dimension's minimized. So here, new sharp is one. Uh, here, there's some weird kind of behavior. It's not, it doesn't have a unique minimum. Um, so we define new in that case. Well, new turns out to be the average of the minima. So new is zero. And well, we don't know uh, actually what the dimension of framed instanton homology of zero surgery on the trefoil on the figure eight is. Uh, it, it's either uh, two or four, but we know that nu is equal to zero, whatever it is. Okay. So that's what nu is measuring. And what we can prove is that, oops, that's the next picture. What we can prove is that, uh, and it's not hard, this new sharp is a concordance invariant. In the sense that it only depends on the concordance class of K. Okay. And actually, this follows uh, by proving that this quantity n of k is a concordance invariant. Oops. So if you remember, n of k is just the smallest n for which this cobordism map, right, the trace of n surgery map, vanishes. All right. So to prove that, let me yeah, go back to this picture. So here, let's suppose that we have these two knots, k0 and k1, which are concordant by this concordance C. Uh, so that I've, I've indicated that schematically in this rectangle, which is the three sphere times zero one. And well, what I've done on the other side is I have attached um, an, an N-framed two handle along K1. And so what you see here on the left is the, um, the trace of N surgery on K1, which I'll write like this. Okay. 
But the figure on the right is, is showing you that this factors through the trace of Ben surgery on K0. So what you can do is if you, if you, um, if you take you know, a neighborhood of, well, if you take this concordance, right, this cylinder, and uh, you attach a, um, a neighborhood of the core D of this two handle, what you see is that in the white part here is actually just the trace of end surgery on, on K0. And so this map associated to end surgery on K1 factors through the map associated to end surgery on, on K0. And so that shows that, you know, if, um, if the, the second map is zero, then the first map is zero. And that implies that uh, N of K0 is less than or equal to N of K1. And then since uh, concordance is symmetric, we have the other inequality. So N of K1 is less than or equal to N of K0. And so they're equal. And so we've shown that N of K is concordance invariant and then nu sharp is just the difference between N of K and its, uh, and N of its mirror. Oops. Okay, so that's the proof of that. All right, so <clears throat> the next thing, Thing. So how is this? Well, it's it sort of, we, we defined it in terms of surgery and knots. So it's not terribly surprising that it then gives us information about the instanton flow homology of surgeries. And I've already kind of indicated that in the pictures I showed you, at least for integer surgeries. Uh, you can prove something uh, more general, that is to say for rational surgeries. And the statement is this, so, so for all knots, In the three sphere, there exists some, some number, which we call R sub zero, which is greater than or equal to the in, uh, new sharp and absolute value. And these two numbers, R sub zero and new sharp, determine the dimension of surgeries, so such that The dimension of the framed instanton homology of P over Q surgery on K is equal to Q R naught plus this quantity, absolute value of P minus Q times mu sharp K. So this is for all rationals. Um, so Q greater than or equal to one and P not zero. Okay. So these two numbers determine the instanton homology of, of all the surgeries. And uh, there, you know, there are similar results, I should say, in, in Hagar flow homology. Um, the, the first was proved by Ojvath and Sabo in their rational surgeries formula paper. And then Jonathan Hanselman in, a recent, uh, in his cosmetic surgeries paper has, has a, an expression uh, that looks more like this one that comes from the immersed curves interpretation of bordered floor homology. Okay. So, so if you want to understand the, the instanton homology of surgeries on a knot, you need to understand these two integers, R naught and nu sharp. And um, I want to first explain uh, some tools for trying to compute nu sharp. So the proposition there is that the new sharp, uh, we said it's con a concordance invariant. It's not a concordance homomorphism in general, but it, it's, a, it's a quasi-morphism. From the smooth concordance group um, to the integers. And what I mean, uh, well, specifically, if you look at new sharp, 
of the connected sum of two knots. You'd like that to be equal to the sum of the new sharps of the knots. Well, what you can say is that this difference is not necessarily zero, but always less than or equal to one. Okay. And so it's a quasi-morphism. The proof of this is another picture. This picture here. So this top picture is representing uh, the four manifold, which is, well here, so, so this is, I've attached uh, an A plus B framed two handle to the four ball along the connected sum. So this is the trace of A plus B surgery on the connected sum. In this lower picture, um, what I've done, if you look at the, the Kirby diagrams on, on the right, this is a boundary connected sum. So this is the trace of A surgery on K, boundary connect summed with, well, the trace of B surgery on L. And these four manifolds are related. And this picture shows how they're related. So if you look at the, the top row, what this shows is that the trace of A plus B surgery on the connected sum is, is actually given by uh, this diagram here, so where this dotted circle is a one handle, right? So this, if you do a handle slide, you get to the next picture and then you cancel the one and two handle and you get to the trace of A plus B surgery. So on the other hand, you can go from here to the picture on the bottom left by attaching a zero frame two handle along this little meridian. And then what you see is that uh, this four manifold, well, the, the, zero, the, the new two handle cancels with the one handle, and so you just get the uh, boundary connect sum. And so what this shows you is that um, the boundary connected sum, this cobordism factors through the trace of A plus B surgery on the, on the connected sum of the knots. Okay, and what that tells you immediately is that the, uh, so if, if the map associated to the trace of A plus B surgery on the connected sum is zero, then either the trace of the map associated to the, to the trace of A surgery on K is zero, or the map associated with the trace of B surgery on, on L is zero. And, and that's the, one of the main ingredients which goes into um, relating the maps uh, associated to the connected sum and the map associated to the maps associated to the two knots and, and relating the new invariants and proving that new sharp is a, is a quasi-morphism. Okay, so that's the essential topological ingredient. More has to be argued after that. Well, anytime you have a quasi-morphism, there's a standard thing you can do. You can homogenize it and get a homomorphism. And that's where, that's how we define our tau invariant. So we define tau sharp of k to be one half of the homogenization. So that is to say, you look at new sharp of the n-fold connected sum of the knot itself, divide by n, take a limit as n goes to infinity. And this is now a homomorphism. From the smooth concordance group to, well, a priori just the reals. We think it lands in the integers, but we can't prove that. Okay. Um, the one half here is, is just to make this look more like the, the tau invariant in Haygard floor homology. So that's the, um, that's what this is hinting at. So we, we constructed this concordance invariant new sharp from surgeries. It was a quasi morphism. We homogenized to get a smooth concordance homomorphism, tau sharp. So you know, if you remember in the beginning, we said that Oops. 
n of k. Um, well, actually, from 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 this fact here, you can see that um, n of k is less than or equal to um, twice the slice genus minus one, and that gives a similar bound on new sharp of k. And then from that, you can prove that tau also bounds uh, the slice genus. So tau sharp of k is less than or equal to the slice genus of k. And moreover, this is sharp for positive torus knots. So that proof takes some work. Um, this, this uses the contact invariant uh, that Stephen and I defined earlier in instant on homology. And what these two things combine, I mean, so, so the fact that these both, both are satisfied means that tau sharp is what's called a slice torus invariant. So slice torus invariant is just some concordance homomorphism that satisfies the slice genus bound and is, is sharp for positive torus knots. And this definition was introduced by Lucas Lewerk, motivated by a work of Chuck Livingston. And once you know that something is a slice tor torus invariant, uh, you know a lot about it. So a corollary, some corollaries are that um, you get bounds, so that you get, in fact, uh, maximal self-linking number bounds. And we can use this to show that tau sharp is equal to the slice genus for, for example, quasi-positive knots. It turns out that slice torus invariants are completely determined uh, for homogeneous knots. Uh, one subclass of homogeneous knots are alternating knots. And in fact, for alternating knots, um, we know the value is just, tau sharp is just minus signature over two. So for alternating knots, here our convention is that uh, signature of T23 is minus two. Okay. And from this, we can actually, from these things, you can show that tau star is equal to the tau invariant in Hagard floor homology. And in many cases, well, for example, for all but three uh, knots through nine crossings. John, all, mm -hmm. Paulo asks, what is a homogeneous knot? Oh, yeah. Um, it's, so it's a condition on um, the signed graph that you get from looking at the, the black graph of a knot, uh, or the graph that comes from um, the ciphered circles. But I'd rather not <laughs> talk about it right now. I can tell you later, Dave. Um, OK. So <clears throat> this allows us to compute tau sharp for a lot of knots. And then one thing that you get, uh, so we said that to compute surgeries, right, we have this theorem that tells us we need to understand nu sharp and r not. So tau sharp was defined in part to enable computations of nu sharp. And one fact that follows easily from the definition uh, and the uh, slice genus bounds is that if tau sharp is equal to the slice genus, then in fact, nu sharp is equal to twice the slice genus minus one. So this is somehow really surprisingly useful in, um, for low crossing knots and for infinite families of twist and pretzel knots, determining what nu sharp is. So maybe, uh, let, me, let me mention some of the, the things we can compute. And then I'll tell you a little bit about how we do it. 
So the computations we can do So we, we, um, let's see, we computed so dimension of instanton flow homology um, so for all non-zero rational surgeries on um, instanton L space knots. For example, so recent work of uh, Lidman, uh, Pinzon, Caicedo, and Scuduto computed the, this dimension for integer surgeries on instant on L space knots. So this is a, a slight generalization of, of their results. Uh, we can compute it for infinite families. So surgeries on infinite families of uh, twist knots and pretzel knots. Um, at least half of the knots through eight crossings. And um, the first 20 uh, closed hyperbolic manifolds in the um, Hodgson Weeks census. So these are the, some of the smallest volume closed hyperbolic three manifolds. Let me just show you some of the results for the latter two. So the, so this, um, this is a table of 19 of the, the 35 non-trivial prime knots through eight crossings. And you can see that we have um, new sharp for these and also this other quantity, R naught, which determines the instanton floor homology of surgeries. Okay. And then this table lists these 20 uh, smallest, uh, or the first 20, hyper, the closed hyperbolic three manifolds in the census. And we can compute the, uh, the dimension of the framed instanton homology for all of them, except for census manifold number seven, where we don't know if, whether it has dimension 10 or 12. Okay. So that's just some of the data. And then for these, we can, we can show that um, the results, the computations of these dimensions agree uh, with what you get when you compute Hagar flow homology, the half flavor of surgeries on these knots. All right. So, uh, sorry, John. Yeah. How, how did you do these computations for the uh, closed hyperbolic manifolds? Well, so what you can what you notice is that a lot of these are um, fillings on one cusp hyperbolic three manifolds, and some of them have several uh, can, can arise as fillings in more than one way, and then you you try to understand uh, the, the knots and um, you use exact triangle arguments and... Okay, so they're all the links of uh, hyperbolic knots in S3? Uh, no, they're not all. Many of them are. Uh, others are branch double covers of quasi-alternating knots, okay. uh, which we know to be L spaces, and others are related to those various things in surgery's exact, surgery exact triangles. So you can kind of just work out what the dimensions have to be. So a lot of them are surgeries on knots um, that we computed in, in the first three items or branch double covers of quasi alternating knots or related to those by surgery triangles. Okay, thank you. Sure. Can you, put compute, can you compute the gradings as well? Well, okay, that's a good point. So I wanted to say that um, actually, we don't compute the relative Z mod four Z grading, but once you know uh, the dimension of the floor homology, you also know what the absolutely Z mod two Z graded group is because you know what the Euler characteristic is. Yeah. Yeah. It, I, and I had another sort of more general question. I mean, is like, is there some chance that there's, you know, 
uh, a better absolute grading as there are in uh, monopole or Hagar floor homology, you know, given by the index of the, you know, the, the Yang Mills operator? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I think it's a really good question. Yeah, I don't know. I think I don't know. It'd be I mean, nice if these groups had some kind of more, you know, yeah, there's a lot of information that comes out of, of that grading as well. And so. That's right. No, I'm, yeah, I'm really interested in that question. I don't know the answer uh, right now. Thanks, Matt. Uh, okay. So let's see. Um, there are two options here. I could either try to explain the computation for twist knots uh, or talk about mutation. I think the computation for twist knots uh, would take a little bit too long, but let me just tell you, um, let's see. So, you know, here are the twist knots um, that we consider. So positive clasped knots. And actually I, I wrote two N for the number of half twists, but we can compute the floor homology of surgeries on, on any of these. So we're um, either two N or two N plus one. So an even or odd number of uh, half twists as in the picture. And uh, this other stuff you see written here was, was part of a description of how we do that. So, you know, there are these numbers R not, right? That I haven't explained how to, how to compute. Uh, and the idea is to try to relate the surgeries you're interested in to other surgeries on simpler knots. Uh, and, that, and then use this, this theorem that we proved, which computes the, the you know, this, this main theorem here. Um, to sort of tie those together and compute R naught for the knots you're interested in. Um, and it turns out that in order to do all these computations, the only floor homology computations you really need are floor homology of surgeries on the trefoil, on the figure eight, and um, then zero surgery on eight, eight, that knot. Uh, and, and that sort of generates. Um, using exact triangles and also this theorem in green, it generates uh, methods of computing the floor homologies of surgeries on all these other knots in these hyperbolic three manifolds. So there's, there's one last thing I wanted to mention. Well, there, there are a couple. So, so one is that, one remark is that, in fact, the, the tau invariant in Hagar floor homology um, can also be defined as uh, the homogenization of, of a concordance invariant coming from surgery. And that's not how it's originally defined. It's originally defined in terms of the not floor filtration, but it, it can be defined in this way. <clears throat> And um, and what what this can be used to do is this idea, this perspective, um, so can be used to understand um, the behavior of the Tau invariant and Hagar floor homology and the one we define under mutation, under not mutation. So what kinds of mutation are we talking about? So the, the most well-known form of mutation is what's called Conway mutation. So you have some tangle in your knot and well one one type of mutation is to cut it out and rotate it 180 degrees along the vertical axis and re-glue and you can also do this along the horizontal axis and the axis that's coming out of the board and these generate what's called conway mutation and so you can ask you know how do various invariants behave under this are they preserved are they are they changed um, 
And I, these have been interesting questions and longstanding questions in Kavana homology and not flow homology. So uh, recently, uh, Zebraeus uh, proved it, that delta graded not flow homology is invariant under mutation. And uh, one thing this, this implies is that if, if K is uh, a thin knot, HFK thin, so for example, alternating or quasi alternating, then tau uh, of K equals tau of K prime for any Conway mutant. K prime. <clears throat> so tau is preserved uh, for thin knots under Conway mutation. I mean, it, that's it's sort of interesting because tau is, you know, it's related to the slice genus and the slice genus certainly isn't preserved under, under Con Conway mutation. Um, I, but I think it remains open whether tau is preserved under Conway mutation for all knots. And I mean, in, in a lot of cases, you can construct genus one cobordisms from out to its mutant. So the tau should be, should be pretty close. There's, there's a more sort of confounding uh, version of mutation called genus two mutation, which is you just, you take a genus two surface sigma in the, in the complement of the knot. And you, you cut um, S3 open along sigma and re-glue uh, by the hyperliptic involution. And you get another knot, potentially different, K prime. Uh, it's genus two mutant. So, well, it, it turns out that Conway mutation uh, is a special case of genus two mutation. But, and it's even less clear and less obvious what genus two mutation does to various non invariants, uh, tau, for example. Uh, in fact, it's, I said that Zebrawi has proved that delta graded not flow homology is invariant under Conway mutation. That's not true under general genus two mutation. Um, what's sort of interesting though is that general genus two mutation seems to preserve the total rank of not flow homology, but not the delta grading. Uh, nevertheless, you can ask, I, the general question would be, you know, is, is tau invariant under uh, general genus two mutation. And the, the observation I wanna highlight is that, so there's, there's a related question about, not about knots, but about the rank of flow homology of three manifolds. So you can define genus two mutation for an arbitrary three manifold. You take a separating genus two surface, cut the three manifold open and re-glue by the hyperelliptic involution. And the question is, is the dimension of H of hat preserved by genus two mutation? And there's some reason to think that the answer is yes to that. Um, I mean, Danny proved that instanton flow homology uh, the original version is preserved by genus two mutation if you work over a field with two elements. And the observation is that, uh, let's call this question one and question two. Uh, yes, a positive answer to question two implies a positive answer 
to question one. And so maybe it is actually the case. So if we believe the answer to question two is yes, which seems reasonable, then maybe it is actually the case that the tau invariant is preserved under arbitrary genus two mutation. And uh, the proof here is an exercise, but it, it uses the perspective uh, of tau that I, that I highlighted before, tau as the homogenization of uh, concordance invariant from surgery. Okay, so I'll stop there. Thanks, Raphael. Okay, I have a question. Um, yes. Can can you compute uh, your concordance invariance for any nuts for which S is different from tau? Uh, what's the first knot for which S is different from tau? Uh, the two twisted whitehead double of the trefoil. Hmm. Matt knows this better. Oh yeah, that's right. Um, Well, we haven't done it, but we can perhaps try to do it. I should, I, yeah, I should also, I, if, when talking about mutation, I should mention the, the recent work also of um, Artem, uh, Liam Watson and Claudius, where they show that the S invariant over any field is preserved by Conway mutation as well. But anyway, yeah, that's a, that's a good question. I mean, is this really, is this tau sharp invariant more analogous to S or to tau? That's effectively what you're, getting at. Yeah. Question. A question about the main theorem. What goes into the proofs? Is it surgery, exact triangle, anything? Yeah, so, I mean, it's, yeah. So, so for, for integer surgeries, it's essentially <clears throat> this, um, some propositions which, which say that the, uh, the rank of floor homology behaves like either a V um, or this little W centered at zero. Uh, so we call these V-shaped or W-shaped graphs. And for rational surgeries, it's just a lot of thinking about the surgery exact triangle uh, and inducting. And uh, yeah, I mean, you, you have a surgery, yeah. There, there's sort of, there's some, uh, you look at all these surgery exact triangles involving rational coefficients, you prove that they all split uh, using the uh, adjunction inequalities, and then you inductively uh, get the result for all rational surgeries from the result for integers, integer surgeries. So it's, yeah, it's just a lot of analysis of surgery exact triangles. Uh, John? Mm -hmm. Uh, do you know if there should, uh, if your tau sharp invariant uh, is equal to Zenkun's tau invariant? Oh yeah, that's a really good question. Right. So the tau invariant in Higgard floor homology can be defined uh, in terms of HFK minus the minus theory. Uh, in the minus theory, you have this one half infinite tower, and the tau invariant is the the Alexander grading of the top of that, the element of the top of that tower. And well, there's an analog of HFK minus in the instanton four world. Um, and so Zhenkin Lee uh, uses that to define an analogous talent, tau invariant in instanton four homology. And the question is whether that's related to this tau sharp we define. And I think it ought to be. I mean, uh, his tau invariant is defined in terms of sutured instanton full homology groups of not complements. What not complements are you looking at? You're looking at the complements of cores in the different integer surgeries. Uh, but it's still not clear whether, you know, how exactly his tau invariant is related to surgery, the instanton full homology of surgery. Uh, and um, there are some other things that, that aren't clear. For example, does it bound smooth slice genus? The answer is surely yes. Um, but it's not as easy to show. 
And so you'd like to show that, and you'd like to show, for example, that it's sharp for positive torus knots, and then you know that it's a sliced torus invariant automatically, and that would show that at least it's minus signature over two for alternating knots and, and other things. Um, I mean, I think the two should be the same, but I don't know how to prove it. But I think there's a lot of interesting stuff to do there. Hey, okay. Hey, so uh, can I make a quick comment? So uh, actually, I think, um, yeah, I mean, I just have a rough idea about how to prove that uh, the child should bounce, uh, the top environment which I define should bounce the four ball genus. Oh, but just like an um, idea, I haven't uh, realized every uh, further step. So oh, that might, uh, and also uh, I should agree that uh, I also believe that on um, the top environment which come from the suture construction should coincide with John's uh, definition about tau sharp. So when you say you believe that, do you, do you think you have a yeah, way of- Yeah, I, I believe that. Um, yeah, but currently I don't have, uh, yeah, currently I don't know how to prove it, but I, I believe that, yeah. Can you prove that um, your tau invariant is sharp for positive torus knots since a couple weeks ago when I asked you last? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, let's see. So, <coughs> um, wait. So, uh, let's see. If we know the four ball, or if we know that tau bounds uh, bounds the four ball genus from below. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. Uh, so, so there is another idea like uh, the tau the tau invariant should bounce the. Uh, Certain bounding number of the knot. Yeah. So if you could could show that uh, the the certain bounding number of uh, of a special class of knot should be like uh, the equals the four-ball then there's yeah. a there, there's a bound from above and below which right. Gives some that, yeah, that's that's what we do actually. So we show that um, yeah. Dal sharp yeah bounds the. Yeah, the, the Thurston yeah. Bennett number using uh, the contact. Yeah, I, I think I think I. Yeah, also I have another argument which shows that uh, there should be an inequality between the system Bennett number and the tau invariant which I define. So oh. uh, using that argument, I think, yeah, I can identify the tau invariant for that special class of knot. Yeah. Okay. It's possible to, oh, go ahead. Oh, uh, I just wanted to ask about uh, R0. Like, is there a significance to that number or is it kind of just thought of as the defect between the, you know, the formula working? Right, I mean, R0 is, sorry, I should have mentioned this. I mean, R0 is, um, R0 is essentially the, the dimension <laughs> where the, wherever the dimension is minimized. So here are zero equals one. Um, these other graphs are, are a little bit strange, um, <laughs> but it's essentially, yeah, it's where the, where the dimension would be minimized if, you, uh, if it were actually V-shaped. So in the case of the W shape, you just pretend it's V-shaped. So here are zero is two and so on. Yeah, so it's sort of, yeah. So R zero um, minus nu sharp is like the defect uh, in, um, it's like how far away the knot is from being an instantile space knot. Okay, I see, yeah. thank you. People can uh, continue to ask questions. You can also clap with the clap button or thank, um, or just say hello to people when questions die out.
Okay. I should probably go actually. I hear some revelings from downstairs. So. Thanks so much, John. Yeah, thanks again. It was nice to see everyone. Thanks, John. Thanks. Thanks, okay, John. So. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for coming. Thanks. Hey. Hey. Okay. How do I get out of here? <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. <laughs> oh, thanks, Steve, for organizing it. It's our pleasure. Oh, sorry. Yeah, everyone involved. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, I will stop recording.